Atlantis have finally stumbled upon it. They've now mastered all the mysteries of fire. It keeps them warm, cooks their food, scares away predators, and with this one momentous discovery, nothing will ever be the same again. The rain is the ultimate test. Only one of them knows the source of the resin. She shares her knowledge of this decaying pine stump. Pine resin, like turpentine, has a distinctive smell. Problem solving, cooperation, and the sharing of knowledge will be essential to human survival. The pine resin will keep their torches alight much longer than before. This is the edge they need. The band are now well on the path to being skillful hunters. They're strong. They're fearless. They know exactly where to find their prey and when. They know how it reacts when chased. And they have the best weapon yet invented. Megaloceros has come face to face with a formidable lethal weapon. Not just fire, but fire plus the human brain. Hunting will become a way of life that will define humankind for the next 300,000 years. From dense accumulations of stone tools and animal bones, we know Homo erectus hunt in places like Boxgrove in southern England. There, 500,000 years ago, hunters preyed on large animals like deer and bison, driving some of them over a 300-foot cliff. From layer after layer of bones, we can tell the hunters came here time and time again. Europe's in the grip of the late Ice Age. Great ice sheets mantle Scandinavia and the Alps. Sub-zero winters last up to nine months. Homo erectus has long since died out. It was during a short summer that their evolutionary cousins, these Neanderthals, migrated to this river valley. Remaining skeletons tell us they were short and stocky. They rely on their powerful limbs for close-in stalking and hunting. And close still means danger. They hunt beasts like a giant step bison. Their weapons are the most lethal yet. Stone-tipped spears that tear into hide and flesh. Six feet tall at the hump. Bison Priscus weighs more than one ton. It's close quarter combat. Their spears are too heavy to throw very far. They must lunge and jab. Oh. 
It breaks off in the wound, causing profuse bleeding. For the Neanderthals, killing animals is about survival. The strongest hunter administers the final blow. These were good times for the Neanderthals. They never let down their guard for fear of lurking scavengers, their eyes constantly mapping the forest, searching for danger. These Neanderthal hunters are no longer just scavengers waiting for a turn at the carcass. They're super predators with no competition from other hominids yet. Early humans, including Neanderthals, lived in temporary camps out in the open. But Neanderthals, inhabiting a region with so many caves, could live in them, especially in winter. The cave would become the center of their world. There were only a few thousand Neanderthals in southern France. They lived in small family groups. High nitrogen content discovered in Neanderthal bones proves 85% of their diet was meat, which they supplemented with plants and berries. Neanderthals have a simple but effective toolkit, the most specialized yet. Better crafted implements replaced the hand axe of earlier times. Biface flakes to cut meat. Curve edge scrapers to clean and soften hide. Sharp points to punch holes in skins. Like their predecessors, they waste nothing. Isolated nomadic bands of Neanderthals lived like this for 60,000 years. They lived from day to day. Their lives changed little. Their brains were larger in size than ours, but it doesn't mean they possessed our level of intelligence. As they discuss the day's hunt, they're confronted with a mystery. To them, it looks like a piece of antler, but it's straight and sharpened. Some human beings done this, but not one of them. Even the strongest hunter can't figure it out. He knows that reindeer don't fight with bison. How did this strange looking piece of antler get into the meat? Melanor! A young hunter wants this strange object as a trophy. Their leader gets the honor. He was brave enough to strike the first blow. This one small object would have a profound effect on the fate of the Neanderthals. They had no 